여러분 안녕하세요 여러분에게 혹시 코인에 투자할 기회가 생기신다면 여러분은 비트코인, 이더리움, 솔라나, XRP 그리고 그외 수많은 알트코인 중에 어떤 것에 투자를 하시겠습니까? 힌트를 하나 드리자면요 최근 1분기에 가장 인기 있던 블록체인 네트워크는요 바로 솔라나였습니다 기술적인 측면과 가격적인 측면 이두 가지를 모두 충족하는 블록체인 대표주자인 솔라나 그래서 오늘 제가 솔라나의 최고 전략 책임가를 만나 이야기 나눠봤습니다 오스틴 페데라 함께 만나보시죠 미래의 돈을 만나보는 시간 퓨처머니 솔라나의 최고 전략 책임자이신 오스틴 페데라님을 만나보겠습니다. 안녕하세요. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Yes. Yeah, so. so could you briefly introduce yourself first? Sure. Uh, yeah. I'm Austin Federa. I'm mm -hmm. the Chief Strategy Officer at the Solana Foundation. Mm -hmm. So, so first question: um, the Solana ecosystem has been receiving significant attention lately. Despite challenges such as the FTX saga, like that, but so what do you think are the reason the Solana eco has been able to build and maintain its ecosystem? Yeah, so the bear market the last mm -hmm. two to two and a half years in blockchain has been um, a hard one for mm -hmm. a lot of networks and a mm -hmm. lot of developers. I think what we saw with Solana is a network that really continued to build through that tough market condition. Mm -hmm. And the products and services that are built on the network today mm -hmm. really take advantage of the performance that's really only possible on the Solana network. And so people are starting to really notice how different those blockchain projects are that are built on Solana. And they're getting curious about what else is getting built on Solana, whether they come in through something like a meme coin mm -hmm. or they get excited about the you know, saga, the Solana mobile phone. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of different ways to get excited about what's going on in Solana today. And mm -hmm. it's great to see people, uh, especially in Korea, paying attention to what's going on. Mm -hmm. So as you mentioned about, um, about meme coin and um, saga mobile phone, yeah. so I want to hear about um, NFT of, on Solana blockchain because in expansion into the mobile ecosystem, I think that NFT plays a really important role in there. So do you have any um, NFT related plans or project? Yeah, so there's a whole bunch that's been going on mm -hmm. in the Solana NFT space. So that started in about 2021 with a project called Metaplex, mm -hmm. which really conceived of a new way to build NFTs. Mm -hmm. So NFTs on Solana are built very different than mm -hmm. other networks. They've got a lot more programmability that goes into them and a lot more capabilities. And they're also much, much, much less expensive mm -hmm. to mint. And so those performance characteristics have created entirely new classes of NFT mm -hmm. projects. The average NFT on Solana, it sells for much less than it does on something like Ethereum, mm -hmm. but the total volume of all the NFT sales on a daily basis, it's, Solana is often the most popular network for NFTs in terms of, of trading and buying mm -hmm. volume. Um, a lot of this is due to some fundamental technology changes. So state compression is something that was shipped last year, mm -hmm. um, which made it a thousand times cheaper to build mm -hmm. NFTs on the network. And this is really the sort of price and performance you need if you're going to do things like take games and mm -hmm. represent every item in a game as an NFT. Uh, if you're going to start bringing NFTs over to mobile and have that mm -hmm. be an experience where people can buy and sell mm -hmm. and trade yeah. them, uh, all of that really requires a fast and affordable network to make that possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Solana's NFT trading volume has surpassed um, Ethereum's with about like 365 million like that and so on, and also surpassed the market cap of XRP. So. I know, um, how do you view the growing influence of Solana in NFT space and crypto in the industry? Yeah, you know, the NFT space in general on Solana, um, it's really robust at this point. There's some very interesting projects like Drip House, mm -hmm. which are changing the entire distribution model mm -hmm. from, you know, buying an NFT once to sort of subscribing to your favorite artists and creator channels mm -hmm. where you can get new NFTs from them for free, mm -hmm. uh, you know, every day or every week. And it's changing the entire business model for NFTs. And I think we've just really, we're at the very beginning of what this technology can mm -hmm. do. Um, you know, profile pictures and stuff yeah. is fun, but there's a lot more that can be powered by this. You know, on the Solana network in general, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it, it's people realizing what's possible to build on the network. 
It has, you know, one of the largest developer communities in the crypto ecosystem. Mm -hmm. uh, and so all of those things really combine to, to make it a network that people want to build on. And, you know, value in crypto is always hard to sort of say why one token moves up or why mm -hmm. a token moves down. But one of the things I really pay attention to is where are the smartest developers building? Mm. And Solana has some of the smartest developers uh, in the crypto ecosystem. They build incredible products mm -hmm. and the growth and success of the network is largely a testament to them. So you mentioned about um, Drip House. So yeah. I thought that that is really interesting because it's like the rival to some social media, uh, social net network right, uh, these days. So I really thought that the idea is really interesting. Yeah, yeah. Drip House is a really mm -hmm. interesting type of product because um, it is one of those things that's only possible when the network is mm -hmm. really high performant, mm -hmm. very cheap to send transactions, and has really high capacity. And this is sort of like the transition from like dial-up internet mm -hmm. to high-speed internet, right? You couldn't imagine YouTube being built on dial-up internet. It just wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. And so when you have these step function changes in technology, uh, it really changes what's possible to build on these technology platforms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So next, um, I'm gonna move on to Saga mobile phone. Yeah. So the sale of Saga two has been really popular. So, and how did you come to combine mobile and blockchain? And could you provide any detail explanation about Saga two? Yeah. So the original thesis of the Saga project, um, which is done by Solana Mobile, um, which is a different organization than the foundation, but we work very closely mm -hmm. with them. Um, the original vision of that was that, you know, mobile is most of our daily lives. Mm -hmm. If you think about, you know, for work, you might use a laptop or a desktop. For your personal life, you're largely using your mobile phone. Yeah. But today, there's a duopoly. There's mm -hmm. Apple and there's Google, and they control 95% of yeah. the smartphone market outside mm -hmm. of China. And that is a really tough place for crypto because crypto can't pay the 30% taxes that yeah, Apple charge <laughs> or the 20% yeah. that Google charges and you know even Samsung right has the the, the most successful mm -hmm. third party app store in the world has had a really hard time getting adoption of users mm -hmm. um, on their specific app store mm -hmm. obviously Samsung phones are incredibly <laughs> popular um, but the idea here was actually to build an open source software stack so there's nothing about the saga that actually couldn't be picked up by other manufacturers, mm -hmm. but it's this open source software stack to make it really easy to have crypto securely on your mobile phone, mm -hmm. because we need to start integrating this into our daily lives. Um, you know, if you're if you have serious amounts of money in crypto, mm -hmm. you're probably keeping it on a hardware wallet. Mm -hmm. But a hardware wallet is very cumbersome to carry around. You're not going to go to the you know convenience store and type yeah. in a pin code to pay. And so the idea was to use the secure element inside of these mobile phones, mm -hmm. which is the same place your credit cards are stored and your face print and your thumbprint is stored, um, and to actually store cryptographic signatures for seed phrases mm -hmm. in there. And on top of that, we built a decentralized application store, mm -hmm. um, which is an alternative store to the Google Play store um, that will allow crypto-friendly mm -hmm. applications on phones directly. And so the idea here is to bridge the gap between a software wallet, which is not secure, mm -hmm. and a hardware wallet, which is very secure, mm -hmm. with something in the middle. Mm -hmm. And that's the vision of, of crypto and mobile, is that we need to start building these technologies in a way that goes mobile if we want people to be using crypto mm -hmm. as part of their daily lives. Yeah, I agree with your idea that we need something in between hardware wallet and software wallet. Yeah. So, okay, so. Oh, but you were yeah. saying, so um, the chapter two, the new, mm -hmm. the Saga 2, the yeah. second device. Any detail so, explanation? Yeah, mm -hmm. so that recently, they launched pre-orders for that this spring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's over 140,000 mm -hmm. pre-orders so far. Um, you know, Korea is one of the most popular yeah. countries for mm -hmm. uh, the original Saga yeah. and the Saga 2 as well. So the part of the goal there is to make a lower cost phone. The original Saga was $1,000, which is expensive, mm -hmm. um, especially for you know, developing countries. Mm -hmm. And so the goal of making a phone that was initially sold at $400 mm -hmm. was really to make it accessible to a much broader base of mm -hmm. users, whether that's in somewhere like India or Africa or South America, um, where also the use cases for crypto are more compelling. Mm -hmm. you know, the United States is a fairly stable country by yeah. global standards. Mm -hmm. Korea is a very stable country by global standards. 
the need for crypto here is a little less present than it mm -hmm. is in countries where you might not trust the government and you might not trust mm -hmm. the banking system with all of your money. And so to have that be accessible on a mobile phone platform, mm -hmm. uh, I think is really transformative for a lot of the world. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So. Um, next question is about um, some network issue. Yeah. So really, unfortunately, um, Solana has experienced some issues with network. But I know that you guys are really working on it. And so what efforts are being made by Solana Foundation to like make up, overcome with this? Yeah, so network performance and reliability mm -hmm. really is the top priority mm -hmm. of the engineers that are building mm -hmm. the Solana Labs mm -hmm. client and the, the other clients on the network. What I will say is that there's a trade-off that was made, and this was a very intentional choice to say, we're going to push the bounds of this technology, mm -hmm. we're going to try and build the fastest blockchain possible. Mm -hmm. And you know, in that paradigm, in that framework, um, sometimes that does involve some outages. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the thing here to sort of keep in mind is that Solana had to be a thousand times faster than mm -hmm. its nearest competitor blockchain in order to sort of break into the market mm -hmm. and to get people to pay attention to what was possible to build on the network. Mm -hmm. And so now there's a really big effort underway with the project called Firedancer, mm -hmm. which is a new validator client yeah. for the Solana blockchain. It's targeting 100 times more performance than the current version of the network. And it will also add additional reliability and security mm -hmm. by having a second validator client available. Mm -hmm. So if one, if there's a bug in one, the other one picks up where it left mm -hmm. off, um, it's really a big uh, step forward for resiliency and reliability mm -hmm. of the network. But you know, there is also, as I was saying, there, the trade-off there really has made Solana what it is today. Mm -hmm. The pace of innovation on the network is faster than any other network. Mm -hmm. And so the trade-off of some occasional downtime, um, you know, Solana would not be where it was today if it hadn't had that relentless drive to mm -hmm. be shipping new code and trying new things and seeing what works. But now is really the time to refocus on reliability mm -hmm. and performance. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, I'm gonna move on to uh, meme, co meme coin. Yeah. So meme coins on Solana has been um, such as Bonk or Dogwood had mm -hmm. like that, um, that had really a significant increase these days and um, driven by meme coin trend. So what is your view on this popular popularity of meme coins? Yeah, you know, meme coins are, are uh -huh. a fun one. Uh -huh. um, at its heart, meme coins are people having fun on blockchain again. Uh -huh. uh, you know, it was a long bear market, and people are really excited to find new jokes, find new things to trade. Mm -hmm. But meme coins are also a proxy for community. Mm -hmm. I, I think we sort of forget that Bitcoin started out as a meme coin. It's just an idea that mm -hmm. people believed in, and they believed in it enough that we now have this crazy world of blockchain powered mm -hmm. by you know all these protocols, and we owe all of that to Bitcoin. Something like Bonk has mm -hmm. really graduated from being a meme coin yeah. into maybe more of a community coin, mm -hmm. something that now is persistent and will continue to exist. Mm -hmm. But these meme coins are also a really good stress test for the network, mm -hmm. right? They are, they are a ton of demand and a ton of activity mm -hmm. for something that isn't actually that important. If something goes wrong with a meme coin, it's not a disaster in the same yeah. way it might be for a large financial institution uh -huh. looking to build on blockchain. Mm -hmm. So the meme coins are a really sort of new and important part of uh -huh. the Solana ecosystem, uh -huh. but they've been, you know, part of blockchain forever. If we go back to 2017, the crypto kitties craze that, you know, took over Ethereum, mm -hmm. it got a lot of there was a lot of problems with Ethereum that were yeah. found because of the crypto kitties mm -hmm. uh, you know, frenzy. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it wasn't a high, it wasn't something that was existential for the future of the network. And it was a really good stress test. The same way inscriptions on Bitcoin really have helped build a more robust network ahead of the Bitcoin L2s. Mm -hmm. So meme coins on Solana are, are really just a great expression of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, as the uh, release of Saga Phone 2 and introduction for um, what was it? Fire Dancer. Yes. So, do you have any goal for this year? Like, is there any um, goal of Solana this year? Yeah. So, you know, I work for the Solana Foundation, mm -hmm. and our role is not to set direction for mm -hmm. the network or people building on it. The network is really the sum of all these developers all around the world and what they choose to build on the network. Mm -hmm. So, the work that we focus on at the foundation is common work that will benefit all builders on the network. It's sort of um, akin to you know building roads and infrastructure 
to make sure that people can build whatever they want to on top mm -hmm. of the network. And so a lot of that focus has been on things like token extensions, mm -hmm. which are a new framework that makes it easier to build compliant um, financial products. Mm -hmm. It brings permissions to token levels and really allows people to build entirely new types of things on blockchain that mm -hmm. previously they had to build on private networks. Mm -hmm. And so that focus for us is, is those common standards, it's improving network performance, mm -hmm. it's improving network reliability, um, and working with all the core developers all around the world mm -hmm. to sort of help help migrate that process. Okay, okay. so um, as the last questions, I know that um, you guys are having really, I don't know, um, have really atten attention for Korean market, Korean users. So yeah. do you have any, um, how do you think about Korean market and do you have any message for Korean users? Yeah, the Korean market's a very interesting one because okay. there's a lot of people here who really care about blockchain, who are very interested in Solana okay. and uh -huh. the Saga and meme coins. Mm -hmm. And it is also um, one of the areas that has some of the strictest regulations around self-custody, mm -hmm. the requirement to KYC wallets mm -hmm. and before you can move funds off of exchanges. And so it's it can be a very interesting place to try and um, build blockchain products because so much of blockchain is built on this permissionless vision for the world. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of the groups we end up working with or other folks on the network end up working with are, are game companies that are interested in building games mm -hmm. powered by blockchain, um, some NFT projects as well. But there's also, there's so much great IP and media houses mm -hmm. and brands in Korea that are looking now at building things on blockchain. I think a lot of them started doing this in 2021 and mm -hmm. 2022 but now they're doing it in a very serious way. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of those companies are looking at Solana as a really fast, single global state machine that can power all the types of activities that they'd like to see. And so, you know, to, to that extent, I think, uh, you know, Korean users are, are power users of blockchains mm -hmm. and it's really awesome to see how much, uh, you know, attention and interest there is in blockchain from the Korean market. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um that's all I prepared. Okay, so thank you for interview thank interviewing you. today. So all for it. Yeah, thank you. 네, 지금까지 미래의 돈을 만나보는 시간 퓨처머니 솔라나의 CSO이신 오스틴 페데라님 만나봤습니다. 다음번에 만나요. 안녕. 안녕.